Okay, so today what I want to talk about is when you have a car which has a dead battery in it, um, when you go and jump start that with some jumper leads, how do you do it? As in, uh, you connect up one set of wires and you connect up another set of wires, um, and which order do you do it in? Um, now, on uh, most cars that are on the road these days, probably all of them now I guess, are uh, negatively grounded. And so the, uh, the prevailing wisdom is that you should connect the positive lead first and then you connect the negative lead. For someone with an electronics background, um, this isn't quite so obvious. So whenever someone has expressed this opinion, I've asked them why. And it took three years um, of asking people why and researching online when I couldn't sleep to actually find a satisfactory answer. Quite a few of the answers I received weren't necessarily wrong, but uh, the people expressing them didn't understand why that was the case, and therefore weren't able to explain it, and uh, in the light of uh, electronics it looks wrong. So I'm going to explain uh, where the sort of electronics point of view is coming from, um, and then explain why it is right that you should be connecting the positive lead first. Okay, so let's uh, look at the possibilities I've heard of what can go wrong if you do it wrong. Um, there's probably others as well, but these are the ones that come to the front of my mind. Explosion. That's a really bad explosion. Anyway, dead computer. I'm trying to write big, which is why my handwriting is falling to bits. So let's start with what is voltage. Voltage is the potential difference between uh, in charge between uh, one area and another area. So if you're looking at a power source, we apply a power source here, um, and that would be plus 12 volts, and that would be zero volts. Let's actually take this a step further. Here is our negative line. Now, why have I put in that blue line there? On a simple circuit, it would look like this. Oh, I need to get that right. I'm glad I looked that up. If we were to then connect the dots straight up there, so if we say this is 0, and then we say this is 12, so at this point, this one here is a 12 volt line, this is a 0 volt line, and then if we go up to here, this is a 24 volt line. If we were to take power off these two lines, that would give us 12 volts. If we were to take power off these two lines here, that would give us 24 volts. But what we can also do, we can actually say, We'll come out this way, like so, and from here, if this is our ground, then uh, this then becomes zero volts and this becomes 12 volts because we're only we're only connected to that battery. Now this is a slight deviation from uh, this scenario, but uh, we'll come back to that in a sec. What I'm demonstrating here is that we actually have two different circuits here. The point being that uh, if we were to connect this to this, we now have uh, 24 volts, which um, is a long way uh, beyond um, our original 12 volts. What I'm demonstrating with that is that until we connect these two circuits, they are not necessarily the uh, at the same level. Now what I mean by that is the ground, let's have a look at here, the ground here comes into the picture as well. So between the, the zero volts here, and the ground, there is a charge as well. That is static electricity, and so that is where, uh, when you open the car on a cold, dry day, and you get a shock off the door handle or something like that, um, that is the charge in between here and here, which is happening. And that will be in the order of uh, hundreds or thousands of volts. Um, that is the sort of thing which, when you're handling electronic equipment, which you need to be really careful of. Now. The cars won't necessarily be at the same, uh, they won't necessarily have the same charges from that ground. So this height I'm using here is just to sort of represent how much charge each uh, vehicle has from ground. Um, so the static electricity gets discharged when you go and make a contact between two things that have a different charge. So if we have a person here, scrap that, let's put a person here because they're standing on the ground, and let's say that they are earthed by it, they're standing in bare feet, so they're earthed by it, but the car's up here. When the person goes and touches the car, they get a 100 volt uh, jolt. This car 
has a 200 volt potential difference. So that means this here is at 212 and this here is at 112. These scales are not the same, it's just so I can fit everything in a way that you can actually read it. Let's go and just quickly write that on here. This is 112 and then this is 212 volt. We're not going to get a full flow um, here, but we would get a static discharge. If we went and connected these two things here, there is a 100 volt difference between them that is going to get discharged. And that discharge is going to go through the electronics, and that is why you ground these things negatively first. Because if we ground these things negatively first, then it comes down and then suddenly this is not 212 it's now 112 which means that there is zero volts difference between the positive leads uh, on there and there has been no discharge going through the electronic components so with this mentality if you were to do it wrong so therefore if you were to do it via uh, connecting the positive leads first um, getting a dead computer dead electronics is definitely a possibility an explosion is pretty far-fetched. It's not impossible, but it is pretty improbable. So that's why, from an electronics point of view, you want to connect the negative lead first. Um, now, let's go and have a look at why uh, the reality is the other way around. I should have done this much bigger. So here we have a bigger battery. So remember that everything is negatively grounded. In some cars, this is wood. In some cars this is metal, but the rest of the body is metal, so we're, we're going to uh, continue with the idea that this is metal, and the same idea will apply for the other parts of the car, but it's just uh, simply this really illustrates the point nicely. So let's say we connect the negative first. Now with this being a, a negatively grounded car, that means that now the two cars are connected so that all of the metal work and everything is now connected to the negative. That means that if we put uh, the positive lead on, if we connect the positive lead directly to the positive terminal, we're in a good happy situation. Um, however, if at any point we slip and we touch any part of the metal of the car, then uh, we're going to create a short circuit. And um, there is a lot of energy in these batteries. So if you create a short circuit at the minimum, you're going to get some quite impressive sparks. I've uh, done that intentionally, I was a little bit stupid, but uh, I, ha I can assure you, you get some very large sparks. But there is a high chance of, um, catching, of getting an explosion from that. Whereas if you connect the positive lead first, nothing is live at that point until you then connect the negative lead um, at which point you have a full connection, there's nothing partial and there's very a much smaller chance of accidents. So if you create that short circuit by having connected the negative lead first, you cre um, you've got lots of sparks, potentially an exploding battery. Um, the dead computer is that the battery will be delivering a lot of current um, in a very inconsistent way and you essentially can deliver surges to the computer. So therefore both of these uh, problems are covered by this particular scenario. So if we come back to what I was originally talking about uh, in the beginning, and we talk about this potential difference, this is not solved by connecting the positive lead first. Uh, it is definitely may, um, uh, still a problem. Therefore, um, the electronics um, will have to be designed in such a way that they can withstand um, any such potential difference. And it could be that they are isolated in some way, that could be uh, maybe they're you. I doubt they're using AC within the car, but that could be one way they're doing it because then you can um, easily isolate things with the transformer. It's more likely they've got some form of protection in there, so it would be a combination of capacitors and coils to. Um, uh, to absorb and dissipate uh, any sudden frequencies, any surges. I'm not sure if that's uh, really clear or not, but um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down below. Um, basically, the bottom, of the, the bottom line is that connecting the positive lead on a negatively grounded car is correct, and if it were the other way around, if both cars were uh, positively grounded, then connecting the positive lead uh, would be the right way to go. Um, like I say, I think there's very few of those cars left on the road. 
if you're a combination of the two cars, I haven't fully thought through. I ha sorry, I haven't come to a, a conclusion about the best way of handling that. Um, I haven't found anything online. Um, I did have a quick search before doing this video um, for various opinions, and there is so much noise online. Um, finding actual useful information is quite difficult. That's enough for this video. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Um, let me know what you think of this presentation style. I've done three other videos so far in this style, and I'm really liking the results, so I'll be really interested to see what you think of it.